Hi, welcome back to Bull Candles. My name is Sherry and my videos are all about making candles in the candle business. Today's video is going to be all about the formula to figure out how much wax and how much fragrance oil do you need to make your candles. Okay, candle people. Um, you're probably going to need pen and paper for this. I am going to put some numbers up on the screen for you to go by. I had a little handy dandy board back here, but it kept reflecting everything in the room, including my um, ring light. So I was like, okay, we're going to wing this and I'm just going to put the information up on the screen so that you can see it. Okay, so we're going to get started um, because here's the thing, whether you're doing um, 6% fragrance oil or 8% or 10% fragrance oil. Sometimes you don't know how to calculate that, um, with the container and also with the wax that you're using. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and start out, um, with how I was doing it before I actually realized, um, that I was already into the formula and that an actual formula actually exists. <laughs> Well, I think we, we, all the candle makers just kind of created it, whether we realized what we were doing or not. So I would find a container such as moi and not have a clue of how to figure out, um, how much wax this is going to take, how I'm going to get the right fragrance oil. Okay. So let's say that you just randomly find a jar. Um, let's just say this is a very common jar. You can go into one of the top candle sellers. Uh, Bath and Body Works and you can find this I think it's the same exact size jar and you can just kind of look at their jars and their labels will have down below what the the um, net weight is and the net weight is how much wax that is in that container which also includes the fragrance oil so that will give you a number to work with so you can either go into a store Find this same exact candle jar that you're trying to use and you can look at the bottom. Now, not every label has this information on there. I do put that information on my um, candles. You will see it in ounces and in grams at the bottom of my labels. So for instance, if you were looking, if you had an empty jar like this, if you had this and you went into the store, you could easily go into the store and you would see on here that the net weight in grams is 198 and ounces it is seven ounces even though on candle science if you go in there it says this is a nine ounce straight sided jar um actually the net weight for the wax and the fragrance oil is seven ounces and 198 for the grams so that is one way to figure it out go into the store um know what your candle jar is that you're going to be using and try to find a candle made in that same jar that actually has the net weight on the jar. Okay. Let's just say you don't have that. You don't go to the store or for some reason, um, you can't find that particular jar in the store. Maybe a easier route, um, would be if that particular jar that you have found, sometimes there are some pretty unique candle jars out there, but I have candle science pulled up here. So you can actually go on to the candlescience.com website. You're going to go down to candle making supplies. Then you're going to go down to containers. Then you're going to go down and click on candle jars. Okay, so I just pulled up a random candle jar. I pulled up the amber straight-sided tumble jar. So if you scroll down just a bit on the left-hand side, you're going to see, it'll say looking for a lid. Right below that, you're going to see how much wax will it hold. Okay, so on the first line, it says wax weight to fill line, which was 8.5 ounces. Then the next line below that says volume to overflow. So that is going to take it all the way up here, the volume to overflow. So that is not the weight that you want. You want the wax weight to the fill line, which is here. So you can look up um, either on Candle Science or just various candle suppliers or wherever you got your candle jar or candle vessel from and see if they have that information. If they don't have that information, 
Another option that you can do, so you've got one, go into the store, look for a candle jar that is your exact jar and see if they have listed the net weight on there. Number two is to look it up on the website. Number three is to actually take the candle jar and fill it yourself to see what the net weight of that wax is going to be. For instance, this, and you can clearly tell this is one of my test jars. It has double labels on here. And also I was measuring wax inside of this jar. Okay. So you're going to take this jar, you're going to set it on the scale and you're going to tear it. So it's down to zero. You're going to take your melted wax. You're going to, first of all, okay, so let's back up. Before you pour wax into this jar, you are going to decide just exactly where you want your fill line to be. So you've got to allow room for either your wooden wick or your cotton wicks. And also, if you have a lid, this particular jar comes with a bamboo lid, you're going to have to allow the room and the space to go down inside of this jar. So you can pretty much see that's about a half inch, maybe from the bottom of here, that's actually going to go inside of the jar. So you want to allow room so that this is not going to smash your wicks down and it's not going to bump into your wooden wick. Okay, so once you determine that much space and then go down a little further and determine how much will your wick stick up. So I'm going to say with this jar, um, I did a fill line on here, but it wasn't um, the best that I could do. I think I could have went a little higher. So I'm going to show you on, on the outside of this jar. So on this jar, I'm going to go down. Let me turn it this way trying to find a space where there's no label. So I'm going to go down to about right here. That's going to allow my wicks to stand free without being disturbed by the lid. It's also going to allow that wooden wick to stand up and not be bumped into by the lid. So once you pour that in and that you have determined that that is a good feel line for your candle jar, then whatever the weight it says on that scale. Now, I always weigh in grams because grams is a smaller unit of measurement and it is more accurate than ounces. So I always weigh in grams. So that way I know exactly how much wax is in this container. Now, so your next question might be, well, how do I find out if I have weighed something out in ounces or another jar I've seen says ounces? Okay, so you're just going to go on to Google and you're going to put in there ounces to grams and it is going to bring up, I'm over here looking at my laptop again, it's going to bring up a little um, formulation and it's going to allow you to input um, what the ounces are and then it's going to say equal, for instance, 8.5 ounces is equal to 240.971 grams. Do you see how accurate that unit of grams is versus ounces? So it will allow you to, just to be more, more efficient with your measuring. <laughs> um, but I think grams is definitely a way to go. And that way it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. So, you know, slightly over, slightly under, um, it really just pinpoints it in and just makes life a whole lot easier. Okay, so that's how you would convert that over. Okay, so now we've got go to the store, find a candle jar, the same exact jar that you're wanting to use. See if the label lists the net weight. There's one way. Second way, get on the websites, get on there and see if they have that particular jar or if you wherever you order that jar from. I mean, sometimes we buy things from a local supplier. Sometimes we just find cutesy things wherever and there's no other information. I have gone on to suppliers and the information as far as the net weight has not been available on those websites. So, but anyway, that's your second choice is going to the website. And your third choice is to actually put this on a scale, tear it out to zero, pour into appropriate fill line for you to allow space for your, your cotton wicks, your wood wicks, and also the, whatever type of lid, or if you don't have a lid, then that way you can raise it up a little bit further. So those are three different ways that you can come up with your net weight. Okay, next question. Now that you have your measurement for the amount of wax that you need to put into that container, how do you figure out, oh, I think I'm bumping the table, shaking the lens. How do you figure out the amount of fragrance oil 
that needs to be added to that wax. Okay, so let me just show you something before we even start thinking. I like to give visuals so that you can see. So I have here, let me move my notes so I don't want them to get so soaking wet. I have here a candle jar, which is full of water, and it is filled not to the overflow line, but to the wax fill line. Okay, so let's just say that this is fragrance oil. If I add that fragrance oil to this wax, it's going to overflow. So we have to figure out how do we get the right percent of fragrance oil into this wax and the line still be at the same place so that it maintains that same net weight that it is supposed to be at. And I'm going to show you that. Okay, I'm going to put some numbers up on the screen. And this is going to be the formula slash calculation, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so you are going to take, let me, <laughs> let me look and make sure I got my notes right. Okay, so you are going to take the net weight. Okay, let's just say um, the 8.5 ounce um, jar that I looked up on Candle Science. Let me pull that back up. Okay, so for that particular jar, the net weight, which is the wax weight to the fill line is 8.5 ounces. Okay, we converted that over to 240.971 grams. I'm going to drop the 971, so I'm just going to say 240 grams. Rather that number like 0.9, technically, you know, you're supposed to round up. I don't round up. I just leave the number, whatever it is, and drop the numbers past the decimal. So you're just going to put the 240. Okay. So just remember rule of thumb, round down for the sake of candle making. That's pretty simple to remember. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is write down 100%. So that's all of the wax that you need. Okay, once you've determined according to the type of wax that you're using and uh, the manufacturer's suggest suggestion of how much fragrance oil, what percentage you should be using. So let's say for this example, you're going to do 10%. So you're going to take 100% and you're going to add 10% and that's going to give you 110. Okay, so 240 grams is the amount of the total wax that's going to be in that jar, which will include that fragrance oil. So you're going to take 240 and you're going to divide it by the 110. You are going to get 218 grams. So now you have the number for the wax. That is how much wax should be in that vessel or in that candle jar. Okay, now how do you get to the point where you know how many grams of fragrance oil that you're gonna need. You're gonna take 240, remember, whatever it takes to completely fill this up. You're gonna take 240 and you're gonna subtract the 218. So it's gonna bring you down somewhere in here. So now you have this little bit of space left, which that allows room for your fragrance oil and it will not take it over the line, the fill line for the amount of wax and fragrance oil. So I'm going to go over that one more time. I know this at first it seems a little bit confusing, but when you start writing this down, and I, and I hope you guys sit down with pen and paper to write these things down. If not, you can always play this video over and over again. I don't mind talking on a video over and over again. <laughs> so, that was a little <laughs> dry humor there. Anyway, um, so I hope you guys have sat down with pen and paper because you're going to need this and practice makes perfect. So you might have to watch this video a few more times just to fully understand this. So again, you're going to take 100% and whatever your frame, it could be 6%, it could be 8%, it could, but for this example, it is 10%. So that's going to give you 110%. You're going to take 240. Remember, that's how many total grams it's going to take to get up to this fill line here, that 240. You're going to divide it by the 110%. That is going to give you how much wax, not the fragrance oil, how much wax is going to be in this jar. So when you're melting your wax down and you're, and you know, you have it in the pitcher and you have it measured out, you should have 218 grams of wax because 
you're going to take 240, you're going to divide it by 110, and you're going to get the 218 grams. Okay, so now you're going to take the 240 again, you're going to subtract the amount of wax that you need to be in this jar, which is the 218, and you're going to get 22 grams left over. That 22 grams is, once again, is the amount of fragrance oil that is going to give you a 10% fragrance load for that candle. Now, once you have this figured out for one candle, this is just about multiplying it for multiple candles. If you're going to do um, four candles, just multiply, you know, the uh, 218, the wax times, what did I say? I said, we're, if you're going to make four candles, okay. So if you're going to make four candles, you will do the 218 grams of wax times four. And then when you get to the fragrance oil, you'll do the 22 grams of wax times four. And then that will mix. And then you will pour equally into your four containers. If you're going to do 10, you're going to do 218 grams of wax times 10. And then you're going to do your 22 grams of fragrance oil times 10. And that is going to give you enough wax with a 10% fragrance load to make 10 candles. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Um, I didn't see any point in prolonging this video because that's just about it. So just to sum it all up, once again, go on, go to the stores that sell candles and look on their shelves to see if you can find your candle vase. Or you can go to the supplier that you purchased the candle jars from and look and see if they give you the max of the see if they give you the uh, um, amount of wax that is supposed to go into that candle jar. And then when all else fails, get your candle jar and measure it out yourself. As long as you know how much wax there is supposed to be, you can figure out that fragrance oil. So that's it. That wraps up the formula for how to calculate your wax and how to calculate your fragrance oil. If you do have any more questions, please feel free to put those questions down in the comments below. I know it may seem a little bit confusing and if it does, just go back and play the video over again. Make sure that you took good notes. Um, use calculators, that will help. Also make sure that you um, take your ounces and change them over to grams. That should help. Um, I'm trying to think of any other tips and tricks. Um, and again, if you haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button down below. Click the little bell and it will notify you every time I put a video up. Also, there are some links below to my social media, to various things, um, to my candle website, um, also to different um, candle making supplies. So those links are always down there to help you find what you need as you are going along on your candle journey. And I think that's it. I think my water, I spilled some and made a mess. <laughs> so I might want to clean that up at this time. But anyway, oh, thank you so much. I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to all my new subscribers, all my subscribers that are already there and that are faithfully watching my videos. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate your support, each and every one of you. I've tried my best to answer your questions. I usually do them rather quickly. Um, let me see, anything else? Any questions, make sure you just put them down in the comments. If we need to revisit this again, I don't know. I'm wondering, did I do a good job explaining this to you? I try my best. I really do. I wish I could have had my dry erase board back here, but it was just reflecting too much. So I, I said, that's okay. I'll just put it up on the screen. So I hope you guys get this. Um, it's a big, big help in your next candle journey. Don't forget to um, come back. And the next video I'm going to put up is either going to be um, the candles burning or how to dye your candles, how to add color to your candles. So either one of those will be um, pretty interesting as you're going along on your candle making journey. Okay, that's it. I feel like I'm rattling on. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I've had a great time with you guys. I've had a great time answering your questions. And once again, I so appreciate your support. And that's it. I'm just going to wrap it up and I'm going to leave it right there. Okay, so thanks for watching. Bye.